out all the elements of a list. So a list is provided and you need, you need to give the output of the multiplication of all the elements that are present in the list. So this is also simple code. Anyone who got stuck in this? No one? Yeah, one. Okay. So it is just, uh, we need to initialize a variable that is mult is equal to 1. And then what we are doing, we are keeping it in a for loop. And what that for loop is doing is, let's see that it is going from i in l. So in for loop, you must have seen that there are two types of for loops. One is for i in range something. And another one is for i in the list. So what is the difference between them? Yeah, so it, uh, in every loop it takes one one element of that list. So in this case we are taking for i in L. We are not taking for i in range length of L. You are getting it? So why we are taking L? Because we need multiplication of all the elements that are present in the list. So for i in L we will just update our mult variable. That is mult is equal to mult into i. And then we will just return mult. This is also a simple question. Next is, return the number of times the element occurs in the list, L. Okay, so the example is given, like uh, element underscore left, that is repetition. So a list is given and an element is given. And we need to check how many times it is getting multiplied, like it is coming in the list. So was the question clear to everyone in the quiz itself? Okay. So how many of you were not able to solve this question? Only one. Okay, so we'll see how it goes. So basically we need to count how many times that particular element that is being called in the function as an input is coming in the list. So we'll just initialize a variable that is count and we'll put it as count is equal to 0. And then again we'll do the same type of for loop in which for i in L means that i is going inside the list and taking each element at a time. So uh, we'll compare that if the element that is being taken in the as an input to the function this element. Okay, if that element is equal to i, so we are, here we are using equal equals to get, to get to know if it is equal then it will go inside the if statement and then if it is the case then count is equal to count plus 1. So it was very simple code. So anybody has any doubt regarding that? Yes or no? Yes or no? The next question is, return the size of dictionary. This is also a very simple question. Simply, instead of a list here, we are asked to return the size of dictionary. So simply we'll do length of t and we'll return by. See, please stop me if you face any issue in any question. Because I'm assuming that now you are like well versed with all these things as we have done it multiple number of times. The seventh question is, return the sorted list of keys. So we have a dictionary and then we need to just find the values, like we need to sort the values that are there in the dictionary. So what approach did you follow? Sorted. So no, like step by step you tell me. There is a dictionary. I just returned the list of sorted keys or keys. Okay. Keys or values. Yeah. Okay, so here keys are there. Okay, yeah. Sorted list of keys. So basically, we'll first find the keys. That go, what are the keys? We'll make a new list of keys, and then we can do the sorting thing. So, in the result, this, uh, we are making a initializing in, uh, list, an empty list, 
that is called result. And then what we are doing in this, that for k in d dot keys, we are going inside the keys thing in the dictionary, and then in the loop, we are uh, appending it. The result is there, that was an empty list. And then we are appending what? k. k, what is k? The keys. So basically we have just appended the keys. Whatever keys were there in the dictionary, we have made a new list which have the value of all the keys present in the dictionary. Is it clear? Yeah. So then, after getting that list which have all the values, the keys basically. So what we'll do, we'll just do the sort of that list. So here we are using a function result.sort. So that's it. The result is the answer. So is it clear to everyone? So please tell if you don't get the feel of what is going on here. So the eighth question is, check whether given number is prime or not. If yes, then return 1, otherwise return 0. So I remember yesterday that few of you were having little difficult time solving this. So how many of you did not, were not able to solve this? Yeah, quite a few. Okay. And how many of you did solve this? So anyone please tell me like what approach did you follow? You did. It's simple though, you check for either it's prime or not and then you return true or false. Yeah, that is the question. Like what approach did you follow to check whether it is a prime or not? Like I uh, input the number, n ko input karwa liya, uske baad for loop laga ke, 2 se lekar uh, n by n floor 2 tak, wo check kar liya, usko divide kar kar ke, agar equal to equal to 0 aa raha hai, to wo prime nahi hua, or else not prime. Okay. So this is also one approach. Sorry? Sorting work. Get out and ask Clear way. So this is prime. This is function ka naam hai. This mein, hum kya input de hai? Koi bhi ek positive integer. Or hum check kar hai whether that integer is a prime or not. So if it is a prime then return 1 and if it is not a prime then return 0 simple. So how will we do that? We are initializing the variable f that is 0 simply. So we will see later that why it is used. Now what we are checking, first we are taking this case apart where n is equal to 0 and 1. Because when n is equal to 0 and 1 then we already know that it is not a prime number 0 and 1. So after that we start checking, we start applying the formula like n percent i. What is n percent i? What it returns? Remainder. Remainder. Okay. So we already have discarded the case 0 and 1 that it, that it returns 0, that it is not a prime number and then we have made a for loop in which i is going from range 2 to n. Why is it 2 to n? Those two say n kyu hi ja raha hai. Average number is reusable by 1 and hmm. itself so. Haan. n se aage to jayenge ne, number usko thodi divide karega. Haan. To two se, jo n hamar paas number given hai ki, hume pata na n prime hai ki nahi. To hum uske piche jo bhi number hai, usse check karenge na ki, kyunki wo hi usko divide kar sakte hai. To two se hum ja raha n tak, zero one hum ne discard kar diya. Two se n ja raha hai, usme dekh rahe hai ki, जो भी i है, जो कि 2 से n है, whether n percent i is equal equal to zero, मतलब जब तो मैं n को i से divide करूँगा, तो उसका जो remainder है वो zero आ रहा है कि नहीं? अगर zero आ रहा है, तो मेरा f one हो जाएगा. Zero आ रहा है मतलब क्या होगा कि वो divide हो गया, और divide हो गया मतलब कि वो prime नहीं है. Okay, so we are converting f is equal to one. Earlier was f is equal to zero. Remember that? Here. Yeah. We have initialized f is equal to 0 and we have checked if it is divided by 1. That means if it is not prime, then I have updated f and banged it. So now I have to check if it is or not f. So now I will see if it is 0, which was before. If it is 0, then what do I do? If it is not prime, it will not be divided by 2 to n. Clear is that? Okay. So now we will see the next question. Which of the following is not a prime number? 
आधे बच्चे गए तो अभी क्लियर है ये चीज कुछ डाउट है तो पूछ लो हाँ आपको क्लियर हो गया पूरा और कौन था आपको क्लियर हो गया पक्का ठीक है तो वी जस्ट रिटर्न सो इफ एफ इज इक्वल टू जीरो जो कि पुराना ही रहा तो रिटर्न वन एंड अगर एफ अपडेट हो गया एल्स दो ही केस है तो हम रिटर्न जीरो कर देंगे सो द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज Use the above function return list of prime number from A to B. So here it is already known to you. use the above function. पहले बता दिया कि ऊपर वाला function जो अभी आपने solve किया वो use कर सकते हैं. So A से B के बीच में जो numbers दिए हैं, हमें बताना है example कि A से B में है, A और B आपको दो integer दे दिया. उनके बीच में जितने भी number हैं, हमें बताना है वो जो numbers हैं, उनमें से कौन-कौन से prime number हैं. तो मैं इसमें क्या करूंगा सिंपली ए और बी के बीच में जो भी मेरा नंबर्स हैं उसको मैं कैसे चेक करूंगा हर एक नंबर को पुराना वाला जो मेरा फंक्शन बना हुआ है इस प्राइम वाला उसमें मैं चेक करूंगा कि वो सही आ रहा है कि नहीं तो अब इसमें क्या किया मैंने एक फिर से रिजल्ट बना के एक इनिशियल लिस्ट बनाया जो कि खाली लिस्ट है तो वट एम डूंग आई इन रेंज ए टू बी प्लस वन So, यहाँ पे कैच है ए से बी प्लस वन तक जा रहा है क्यों क्योंकि बी वो इंक्लूड करता नहीं है कभी भी जब आप ए से बी में जाते हैं तो ए से स्टार्ट होता है बी माइनस वन तक जाता है हमेशा तो लेकिन मेरे को जाना है बी तक ही जाना है मुझे चेक करना है ए और बी भी तो कहीं प्राइम नहीं है अगर वो प्राइम हो गए तो समझ रहे हैं सब हाँ तो ए से बी प्लस तक जाऊंगा तो ये चेक करेगा ए से बी तक जाएगा मतलब तो अब इस रेंज में जब मैं गया हर एक में जा रहा हूँ ए जा रहा हूँ अगले में जा रहा हूँ सब में जा रहा हूँ तो मैं देख रहा हूं इफ इस प्राइम आई इज इक्वल इक्वल वन तो अब मैं इफ में क्या डाल रहा हूं जो मेरा पुराना फंक्शन था उसमें वो मैं आई वैल्यू डाल दे रहा हूं और वो चेक करके बताएगा कि वो प्राइम है कि नहीं तो अगर वो प्राइम है तो वो वन के इक्वल हो जाएगा क्योंकि फंक्शन का जो पिछला फंक्शन था उसमें रिटर्न क्या था जीरो और वन जीरो मतलब प्राइम नहीं है वन मतलब प्राइम है तो इफ इस प्राइम आई इक्वल इक्वल वन अगर वो प्राइम है तो मैं उस रिजल्ट जो मेरी खाली लिस्ट थी उसमें मैं ऐड कर दूंगा वो वैल्यू रिजल्ट डॉट अपेंड आई ओके तो जब ये लूप चलता रहेगा तो वो देखता रहेगा जो जो प्राइम वाले होंगे वो सब अपेंड होते रहेंगे और फाइनली मेरा रिजल्ट आ जाएगा तो ये क्लियर हो गया सबको ये सिंपल था बट जिनका पुराना नहीं बना होगा वो ये भी नहीं कर पाएंगे ठीक है तो बहुत सिंपल तो इसका है किनका दो क्वेश्चन नहीं हुए बस बाकी सारे हो किनके आधे क्वेश्चन नहीं है बताओ सबके आधे हो गए अच्छा रिजल्ट बताएगा ठीक है तो ठीक है तो एक रिक्वेस्ट आया कि वन टू थ्री क्वेश्चन हमें रिपीट करने हैं ऑनलाइन स्टूडेंट्स के लिए तो फर्स्ट स्टूडेंट दिस फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन वॉज टू फाइंड द साइज ऑफ द लिस्ट In this function, we are provided with a list as an input, in which uh, the list is given, and we need to find the size of that list. So suppose in this example, we are known that the list is one, two, three, comma four. So obviously, we can see that the size is four. So there is an input function that is length, l e n l length, to calculate the length of the list. So we just put y is equal to ln of l, and then we will return y. So it is a very simple question in which we are just required to find the length of the list. In the second question, we see that uh, the question is that we need to find the last five elements of the list. So suppose the list is there: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we will print the last elements, like last five elements. So here in this case, what we can do? The input will be a list. 
and the output will be also a list which includes only the last five elements of that input list. So what we'll do, we'll just do return L length of L minus 5 to length of L. To length of L means if a list is of length 10, so length of L will be 10 and then what we'll do, we need to find the last 5. So we need to go to the 5th index. If it is 10, if it is 12, then we need to go to the 7th index. So what we'll do, length of L minus 5. That means 7 till 12. So uh, it will cover the last 5 elements. So next question is, check whether the given element exists in the list or not. If, the, if it exists, then return true, otherwise return false. So we have to check the list of the list and the element of the list. So we have to check if the element is present in that list or not. If it is present, then simply true, then false. So it is again a simple question in which I need to just put a conditional statement in which if ln in L, if ln in L, then return true, otherwise return false. So what we have to do in this question is, if ln in L, we have discussed that दो टाइप के पॉर्ट होते हैं जिसमें एक जब इन है इंस्टेड ऑफ इन रेंज तो इन में जब वो बोलते हैं कि इफ एलम इन एल तो वो एलिमेंट जो है वो लिस्ट के जितने भी एलिमेंट से सबकी एक एक करके वैल्यूज लेता रहता है तो इफ एलम इन एल देन जस्ट रिटर्न बाय इज इक्वल टू ट्रू कि अगर एलिमेंट जो है जो मैं ढूंढना चाह रहा हूं वो लिस्ट एल में है तो सिंपली बाय इज इक्वल टू ट्रू रिटर्न करना है अदरवाइज अगर वो नहीं है तो बाय इज इक्वल टू फॉल्स so simply that will be the will return by simply here that whether it is true or false whether the element is present in the list or not. Okay, so I hope it is clear. Yeah. So you all studied the lectures, the video lectures that we posted, and yesterday's lecture also that we posted to confusion matrix and all those things. Is it clear to everyone? How many of you are not at all clear what was hap what happened yesterday? Only four, five. Slowly, slowly. Why? Even the thinking and then raising hands. Okay, few of you. So, okay. So, our quiz is based on.
सौ लोग हैं उसमें सिर्फ पांच को ही बीमारी है एक्चुअल तो और हमारे डॉक्टर्स जो हैं उन्होंने एक अधूज और एक पार्थ इन दोनों के सिस्टम्स खरीद लिए और
So it has got perfect recall. Got it? So high precision means the resistance says only three people. They have disease and they actually have disease. High recall means it never misses any disease person. That is high recall. Is it intuitive now? Intuitively it is clear? Okay, then I will ask you a question. Give me an example, a scenario where you will need high recall but precision can be low, no problem. Same example. No, same example won't work. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. Same example. Actually, we want high recall, right? Because we do not want to miss any diseased person. Right? I have my automatic machine which is very quick, it is very easy to deploy. Very quickly it will tell, okay, these 10 people have disease, but okay, 5 people are extra, but that is fine. Then these 10 cases will go to the doctor and doctor will manually examine them and he will do more tests to confirm whether they have disease or not. Right? And in, the, in those further tests, those 5 undiseased people, they will be Okay, send home, okay, no, no, you don't have disease, it's fine, right? But if the machine missed a diseased person in the first place, there is no way the doctor will examine them, so they are gone forever, right? So my machine should have a high recall, even if precision might be slightly less, because in practical systems, ideally we want high precision, high recall, 100% precision, 100% recall. But practically it is not possible, so we do a compromise. We say, okay, let me have a high, a high recall, uh, but uh, let me have a little low precision, but recall should be very high. So this is an example, thank you, that uh, where, we need, where we actually need very high recall, precision can be less. Ideally 100%, but okay, even if less than 100%, no problem, our doctors will do some extra work and take care of that. Now give me a situation where we need high precision even if recall may be compromised. Oh, somebody else. Please give me an example where we need high precision even if recall may be compromised. My system should have very high precision and recall is, which means that whenever my system says yes, it must be yes, but it is possible that it misses many cases, many positive cases. High precision. Huh? Face detection. Face detection for? Oh, you mean that giving access to the phone, face recognition for unlocking, it should have high precision. Okay, uh, what if uh, precision is low? It may not open, may not unlock sometimes. 
That is why the company uh, Apple or Google, they